Well, to celebrate my 10th anniversary as an artist, I've decided to produce extremely limited edition silkscreen prints. Um, each print is an issue of 10, and uh, this sort of kind of encapsulate my first 10 years as an artist. Rather than doing them year by year, I've sort of cherry picked either collaborations that I'm proud of, say with Warp Films, and this is England, and Paul Smith. We did a t shirt design, well, I did a t shirt design for Paul. So I reproduced that particular image as a silk screen print. Then obviously the work with, I've done with Oasis has been celebrated in this collection as well. So they're the collaborations that are important, but also images that I'm particularly proud of and also images that people have sort of fallen in love with. I've, uh, I've sort of taken the decision to reproduce those in a very limited way. The Snog, um, which uh, I've, you know, I dearly love because it's become a icon of Sheffield in some respects. It's kind of become a landmark. Uh, people sort of have the photographs taken underneath the kissing couple in the same sort of pose, and it's sort of like a, a symbol of their an everlasting love. Also, there's um, Half Time, which is a favourite of mine because it's a favourite memory. It's a memory that I had as a kid in the six week holidays, and you just basically played football on the backfield. When you do a piece of work, you, you're never quite sure. Uh, whether it's going to be taken to the hearts of the public in a sense. So there's no there's no rhyme or reason or there's no kind of magic formula to produce a piece of work that people love. It just kind of has to happen in a way, uh, naturally. I think the Hole in the Road uh, silkscreen print um, is kind of uh, one of those that sort of, it's the memory that sells the picture rather than the actual artwork itself. And I think that was a surprise because it's quite a minimalistic sort of interpretation of the hole in the road. There's no fish in there, but your imagination sort of produces those fish. You know, in your mind, you can see the fish and you can see, you know, there's no brickwork or there's no real detail in the image. It's all part of the, your imagination, your love for that particular piece of architecture. It was a real privilege to um, go down to B&B Studios and see Ed at work. Uh, he's, he's a magician. He's also, I can liken him to uh, the sound engineers at EMI in the early days when the Beatles were doing the recordings. He's there in his white coat um, producing these uh, precision pieces of artwork. And um, it's, it's, it's amazing what's involved in producing a silkscreen print. There's tubs to wash the, the screens down in. There's a whole process of storing each print individually so they don't touch each other, so the ink's dry. There's, there's 101 different things that you need as a silkscreen printer just to produce one print, never mind 10 or 50 or 100 of them. And you know, it, it, it's alchemy in some respects. And the, the nice thing as well is it's, it's very an organic process, even though you can't really do much once the silkscreen print's done itself, it's set there. You, you've got the image, the line's going to be there, or the ink, when you screen it on, it's going to stay there. It's an organic process where you're mixing colours down until you find the right tone that you need. So you're not simply just picking a colour off the shelf. There's that as well, and that's all part of the printmaker's art, is getting the right colours, understanding how those colours will work, if they need to be printed more than once. And it's just a continuous sort of um, relationship between the printer and the work where it, it's, um, it keeps evolving. With screen printing, it's, it's an old process, but nowadays it's kind of like a photographic process in the sense that we start off with a negative and we print a positive. So with each individual colour, we need to make a, a stencil. So if we've got a six colour print, we make six individual stencils and by printing the layers on top of each other, that builds up the, the final composition. So we start off with uh, the acetates, then we expose that onto the screen using a light sensitive emulsion, and then that will give us a negative space where we can actually print the ink through the surface onto the paper. You're, you're building up a composition in layers and I think that's what's really great about it because sometimes you can get two or three colours down and thinking this is not really working and by the fourth or fifth or sixth layer it really, you know, it comes together and it, and it becomes a really sort of strong piece of work and you often find that that uh, you just need to kind of keep adding the layers and then it, it sort of comes into focus. I guess it depends 
what medium you work in, but a lot of mediums you work from kind of light to dark, and I, I suppose that's what we've been doing here. So putting down the light colour first, then the mid tones, then the darker tones, and then holding it all together with the, the black outline on top. And just to give a little bit of leeway, the colours that sit underneath the black outline are all slightly bigger, you know, just so you've got a bit of movement uh, by a couple of millimetres. And everything really, the, the whole, the way that the print bed is set up is to give you a, a crisp, even print that works exactly the same each time uh, for multiples. So it's, it's designed to work for editions rather one-off pieces. So it was nice to have the opportunity to do something where it's kind of a lot more, again, hands-on and involved. And the idea of making kind of reimagined versions of, you know, 10 um, popular or classic pieces from the last decade, you know, felt like a real fun thing to do. And, a, and again, a challenge, you know, so it's, it's more that really. I, I like Pete's work and I like his approach to storytelling and narrative and nostalgia and, and everything. And I think it kind of goes hand in hand with an old dying process perhaps, but bringing it to life with a new kind of a set of eyes. As artists, we all work by ourselves in these tiny little bubbles and we can become a little bit sort of uh, self-engrossed. And it's just nice to expand your horizon sometimes and see how other, how other people are doing their thing. And, um, it, you know, it's, it's, it happened in the, in the Impressionist period and all the way through, artists collaborated, they met in pubs and bars and talked and philosophised. There's not much philosophy going off in Sheffield, but there's plenty of drinking. And that, like, that's just as creative. Seeing images through other people's eyes and seeing how they might want to make a composition is different to how I'd perhaps approach it myself, but doing it as a printmaker, it's a two-way thing really, I think. It's making work for ourselves, making work for other people, and that kind of collaboration, that shared um, knowledge and, and skills and everything, it, it kind of is for the great and good and pushes everyone forward and to see what you, what you can achieve with the medium. I'm really excited about the project because not only is uh, Kid Acme still screen printing, he's also collaborating with me as well and on one of the prints which is um, the Arctic Penguins, which is basically the Arctic Monkeys done as penguins, uh, stood in front of a road sign which is Welcome to Sheffield. I've got Kid to do the actual Welcome to Sheffield in his street art style. It's nice again to have a, a bit of a involvement in it as an artist as well as, as a printmaker. So. Um, yeah, there's a little little bit of a collaboration in there amongst the series. I've been really, really lucky as an artist that I've actually survived 10 years in the first place, but also in those 10 years I've managed to cram quite a lot in already. And a lot of those things have been really, really, you know, for me personally, mind-bending. The things that sort of stand out, rather than just the collaborations, which, you know, you're really proud that people are sort of recognising your work and appreciate it and, and commission you to, to do things for them. It's the exhibitions themselves that are the thing that stand out in my mind. Because the very personal journeys, the sort of kind of your soul's laid bare for people to to witness in some respects. And it's really, you know, it's you're putting your heart and soul on the line when you have an exhibition. And so for them to be well received is an absolute, you know, it, it's it's an absolute joy. And Joy Sheffield is the highlight of my career so far, simply because so many people turned up to see the show and, and actually enjoyed it as well. It's one thing getting them through the door, it's getting them out the door with a smile on their face is the important thing. And I think I achieved it with that particular exhibition. And so hopefully I can continue to produce more exhibitions with the same kind of response.